Hey, it's Don here from the board. Welcome to another video. In this video, I want to talk about and wrap up on some of my thoughts in regards to the 25 watt soldering iron kit that I got from JCAR, which I've had a couple of videos on before. And then I also want to then roll on to my experiences in building an Ergodox. But before we go on, um, I would also like to say that I don't know if it's very noticeable at the moment, but I actually have a slightly better cam setup. And what you can see on my desk cam now is hopefully what is showing as a 1080p at 30 frames a second. And the, uh, the camera's also got a little bit of uh, autofocus there too. It's actually a second-hand uh, Logitech C910. I was hoping to get a 920, but that didn't turn out to be the case at the time. And uh, yeah, well, if, if I'm lucky, I'll get a 920 and I can switch over the cam. So my front facing, which is just a very simple life cam 3000 at the moment, I think it's recording 720. We'll see. Uh, to begin with. Okay. So I've had two videos already in regards to the JCAR 25 watt soldering iron kit. The first one was obviously the unboxing and just going through some of it. And the second one was just a bit of talk and experience on how it went after I had done the diodes on my Ergodox build. Now that I've finished pretty much most of it, there's only the three LEDs that are left to solder and I'm not quite sure when I'll get around to doing that, but I've basically done all the other components and all the other switches. I suppose first and foremost is that uh, lead free solder really sucks. <laughs> um, there's no easy way of putting it in that it doesn't melt as easy, it doesn't wet as easy, um, and it splutters rosin everywhere. Now this was a full tube when I started and you can see that's how much I've got left after doing the Ergodox. You know I'll probably go through another little bit of that doing the LEDs. Probably could have done a little bit with uh, more efficiency using a leaded solder. And I'm definitely going to get myself some more leaded solder because if I'm not selling these commercially, I don't have to adhere to the uh, reduction of hazardous substance or the ROHS standard, which the EU pushed through, which is why lead-free solder is such a big deal. Yeah, now as my sort of concluding thoughts on the iron, I'm not really going to talk about the other components in the kit terribly much because it's it's not really the focus of why I got the iron. Uh, it performed. It did the job. I soldered all the 88 switches, all the components on. Does what it's meant to do. I've already talked about how the grip does move and you can see my sort of uh, jury rig job of a bit of twist tie and a elastic band to stop that rubber grip from moving and I actually got a bit of feedback from one of our YouTube viewers uh, Hyperjack and he suggested that you can go and get this aluminium tape stuff that they use for metal piping like ductworks, drain pipes, that kind of stuff and he provided me with an Amazon link so what that is is this the uh, Scotch aluminium foil tape and essentially yeah, duct sealing and general repairs. So he recommended putting that underneath the actual grip and that will hold it in place. So if you do run into something like that, that's uh, a good potential use. I do have some double stick tape somewhere in my, one of my wife's craft drawers, so I'll probably use that instead since, you know, I'm not going to go and get a whole roll of tape just to tape the grip on a soldering iron. But if you're going to have other uses, by all means. The negative that I found for this was that by the time that I had done all the 88 switches, it got really hot. The handle was very hot. It was uncomfortably hot to the point where it was almost painful. Uh, I decided to just suck it up and just keep working with it. If I'd kept going, I don't know if it would have overheated. I don't know if it has an internal cutout for overheat, but I would say it's probably not something that you want to use for a super long extended period of time. But besides that, especially if you're just doing short solder jobs, just around the place or short builds, 
maybe like a 40 percenter or something like that even a 60 percenter because it is 20 switches less it probably won't get so bad okay so that that's pretty much wrapping up on the actual soldering iron and let's move on to the ergodox okay so this is just a, uh, a Chinese cheapie. It was uh, an $8 cable plus a couple of bucks of shipping. I bought it on eBay, TRRS cable. I just wanted to get it simply to uh, have something that would work. It's a one meter. It's probably a lot longer than I actually needed it, but it was either get the one meter, get a 30 centimeter, get a 15 or pay a little bit more uh, to get a custom cable, which I probably would like to at some point in the future, but for just starting off hopefully that will do the trick now there's the uh, the build I've got gator on green switches mounted in it in the standard configuration there you will notice it does not have a plate I didn't have a plate to start with um, you may have seen my GH60 build which is mounted on an IKEA chopping board with standoffs it too doesn't have a plate it's a personal preference of mine I like having the components visible I like being able to see the PCB it just gives it a little bit more of a I don't know techie feel to it hand built feel to it and it is kind of an ergo ghetto ergo docs because of the uh, bad solder work on it and that it will have a mishmash of keys not quite vomit caps but yeah it's not a display piece let's put it that way and so I'm not too worried that it doesn't actually have a plate and it, the actual PCB is quite quite strong it's quite firm and rigid so in terms of flex I don't think it needs the actual plate for support and strength simply because it is a much shorter PCB compared to say like a 60 or even bigger did I have a fun time soldering this building this yes and no it was a learning experience um, so let's let's go through some of the things that I discovered along the way and some of the critical mistakes that I made and if you are building an Ergodox from scratch in the future if you do watch this video then at least hopefully you won't necessarily make the same mistakes that I did you can learn from it and benefit first and foremost putting in diodes now I went with a through hole option I didn't use the SMDs and I'm very glad in a way that I didn't because of the amount of effort with lead free solder but at the same time I'm also kinda sad that I didn't because it created a different problem now let's see if I can uh, get this to focus is it gonna focus? Oh, the reflections are no it doesn't really wanna oh, it's probably about as best as it's gonna get what you might see is that I have all my diodes and they're mounted on the correct side according to the build guide from the Ergodox IO but what you don't see is that there's actually any solder around each of the sides of the diodes and that's because I've actually soldered them on the switch side now I don't know if that'll focus very well or not let's just bring that down there we go so you can see those blobs of solder sitting at the bottom of the switch why did I do this I asked myself that now um, I will admit that I was lazy because yes I could have gone back and I could have desoldered every one of those diodes and then put them with the solder beads on the other side but I was not going to do that especially with the lead free I had talked to people in the community prior to starting my build and I asked them is it an issue on which side you solder your components on for through hole do you do it on the component side or do you do it on the through hole side and a lot of people said to me it doesn't really matter because as long as you solder wicks through and it goes in and it connects then it's not really a big deal it's really more of like an aesthetics thing or you know if you have a personal preference in the way that it's done so I made the decision to actually solder it on the through hole side the mistake of doing that for those who 
aren't familiar with what can happen is that because they're so close, the, the actual, the through hole points, there's, there's this white grid box, right? That goes around the switch. Um, you can kind of see like the edges of it around every switch, okay? And it says SX whatever three there, okay? That's the bounding box for where your switch goes. The solder beads sit right on the edge of that, right on the edge. If your beads are fat and big, which, you know, if you want to get a good solder, they can be. And if your diode legs are pointing at a funny angle and you solder on the switch side, like I have here, not all of your switches are going to sit in flush. <laughs> um, it's not super evident, but uh, let's see if I can get that to... Uh, some of my switches don't sit 100% flush on the PCB because of that. They all go through and the pins are long enough that they go through and I can solder good beads and connections. But some of these switches are at a slight angle because the base of the switch actually contacts the bead. And obviously I had already done everything up to this point and the first couple of switches I had put in were okay then I hit some that weren't okay. And as a matter of fact, you can kind of see on this switch, it's slightly lopsided and that's because one of the beads has actually pushed the switch that way. So it is a ghetto dox. So that's point number one. Be careful where you solder. And if you want to solder on the switch side, small beads and try and get your diode legs nice and straight or away from the switch mounting side. Now, point number two, this was actually discovered by, I think it was Jolly Green Giant in that the build guide was not very specific on the IO expander. Now, if you've never built one, you've never really seen a PCB up close or the IO expander, the expander actually has this little semi uh, hemicircle notch over here and on the actual PCB which you can't see it so clear well there that's okay there's this little square symbol there that indicates to line that up now I didn't make this mistake because somebody else had made the mistake and they had said that in one of the threads so I knew not to so make sure that that hemicircle lines up because if it's not super obvious and nobody mentions it somewhere you might make the mistake and have your IO expander the wrong way around. Um, capacitor was easy to put in, uh, soldering in the junction there was fine, no problems with that. Soldering in the uh, little connectors, so as part of the build in these white spots here, you bridge them using just a bit of uh, the legs that you trim off, either diodes or LEDs, depending on whatever it is that you want to use, and you solder them, they were fine. 3.5 connector, not a problem. Fairly simple. Then we move on to the other hand. Um, just in terms of general feedback, it's been a long time since you know I've done anything with resistors, so I actually had to Google what the color stripes were for the correct ones. The kit that I managed to get from the Penumbrum keyboard group by actually contained extras, so it threw me off because. I wasn't sure which were the right resistors until I looked up on the internet. So for the 2.2Ks, and I hope I get this correct because obviously if I don't have this correct, somebody can correct me and then I will be desoldering some resistors. It's the uh, gold and then the three red stripe is the uh, 2.2s. And then for the LEDs, it is the gold brown and two red, which is that one that you can fuzzily see there. Um, in regards to the Teensy, I'll get to the USB part in a moment, the guide was also a little bit not specific enough. It mentioned about mounting the headers if you were using headers and then it said to solder the Teensy into the board. So I was like, oh sweet, I have all these header pins, I'm gonna fill in all of the headers. But bow. You do not need the end row 
of the headers. You need both sides, the long sides. You do not need the five headers in the middle. I soldered all of them and I was freaking out because the whole Teensy was getting super hot and I was very concerned that I was heat damaging because I couldn't get the beads to wet properly onto the header pins onto the Teensy because of the lead free solder and then when I discovered while I was trying to insert the Teensy into the Ergodox PCB that it wouldn't fit and it was because I had five headers on the end. There are no holes for it. It does not fit. Very sad. I had a choice of either trying to desolder all of them because the way that I had actually broken them off I would have had to actually desolder them all or I went the ghetto route which was I clipped them off. <laughs> um, well, still trying to get used to uh, pointing things so yeah, just trying to get it to focus there. You'll see there's a bit of brassy colored material and that's because I just clipped them off and then I boshed it through and then I soldered the pins just fine. Um, I realized that you can't redesign it very well to have just random holes there because that row actually sits right across the IO expanders. Um, but instructions would be nice to specifically mention don't put those header pins in because if you do you're going to either have to desolder them clip them or you're going to have a bad time moving along the last component of pain as i shall call it is soldering the actual usb bit now i've never done super fine soldering work before and i've mentioned that before the, pen, uh, the Pendulum KB kit came with a USB mini B connector so that you could actually solder your wires to it to fit into the actual Teensy. The setup that I have here is actually based on the Ergodox IO build guide that Robot Maxtron has put together that cannibalizes an existing connector. The reason why I've gone that way is because I killed that mini B connecting piece of hardware. I melted the plastic and I heat warped the pins trying to solder wires to it. Um, was not a good experience, but I'm definitely glad for it because now I know that I am very unlikely to ever get into soldering custom cables, except maybe on pain of death, or I would have another go at it if I had leaded solder we'll have to see. So in my frustration at trying to solder that USB B connector I thought I would go ahead and solder that USB connector to the Ergodox PCB. So that's where I made another critical mistake because I didn't read properly I looked at the images and I soldered all of the points on this side. Now anybody who's built one of these is probably going to go, oh no, oh yes, I soldered all of these connecting points. Now there is big fat points and then there's a bunch of little points. Some of those points are through hole points for the wires of that USB connection. I filled it in with solder just because I blindly soldered all those points. The connector is nice and solid. When I came around and I did the uh, Robert Maxtron's method of just getting a cable and sacrificing it, I then discovered I couldn't put those wires through because I had already filled them with solder. And yeah, I was just like, man, I'm not having a good time. So in the end, I had to do some soldering, doing it as a uh, putting another bead on top and then soldering the wires onto that. And that also constitutes why this is getting to be a bit of a ghetto fix. And you can also see because of the fat connector, I've had to do a bit of a bend around to get around that. Just a funny story in regards to uh, sacrificing cheap cables. This is actually the third cable that I had to sacrifice. The first one I tried to slim it down because 
you can kind of see, you know, factory made heads are fat and I cut through the cable, so no good. The second one I cut off did not have the standard wiring colors. It was a, a cheapy cable, I don't even know what it came with, but it had red, white, white, and black. No green. So I thought, screw that, not going to use it, ditched it. And then the third cable I sacrificed did have the right colors and I managed to get it on. So I have powered it, I have plugged a USB cable straight into the Teensy and it does light up and blink and then I plugged that back in and I plugged the USB through the socket and the Teensy also blinked. So I'm confident in that at least the power circuitry, the power connections work. Um, and that's pretty much it. It took me probably about two and a bit to three hours to do all the components, but I was working fairly slowly, soldering the diodes and then getting the components, clipping bits, getting the switches in. Um, the switch soldering was fine. I, I had no problems with it whatsoever. I'm very comfortable with switch soldering after the uh, PCB I'd worked on with the GH60. I've got, you know, good beads even with the lead free because I had a much better idea what I was doing and it was kind of like after the first one or two went in you know the rest just came back like that almost like swimming or riding a bicycle um, they're solid they're not going anywhere and I'm pretty confident about that I don't have a case for it yet um, I have spoken to profit 23 on reddit I have looked around you know cases aren't that expensive but shipping a case to Australia is I could get 3D printed cases, but once again, the shipping from overseas is expensive. I do have a 3D printer, but the build bed isn't actually big enough to print a 3D case. And so after looking around, after having a bit more discussion with some people, I'm actually going to go with an open design. It's not the same as my GH60 where it's going to be mounted on a chopping board, it's going to be worse. and. What I've got is I've got some brass knurled nuts and I've got some brass bolts and I'm just going to put those bolts in so it lifts it off the actual PCB but the rest of it's going to be pretty open. It'll be an interesting look. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes and how it feels. Um, yeah, and in, in regards to caps, uh, I scored for a reasonable price some blank uh, DSA Borealis mods, so that'll be on the actual mods. I may have to do the uh, magic tape and write on them trick because some of you might know I've been looking for legended caps for ages, but I'm still hunting for some cheap DSA alphas to go with that. At the end of the day, you know, I might have to just get cheap blanks maybe, maybe vomit or grab bag keys or something like that uh, to fill out the rest of the board, but to be honest, the way that the board is, being a ghetto docks, it doesn't really matter, as long as it works. Now, talking about getting the firmware on there and flashing it to the sort of layer and layouts that I want it to be, um, I will do it as a separate video. And I want to wait until the actual hardware comes in and I can fit it up. I might not necessarily have caps by then, depends on how I luck out on the market or not. But I want to run a video on using the TMK config tool that Evan of Minivan Videos has created. So I'm just going to bring that up onto the screen now, which is this guy. Um, Evan actually put a thread on Reddit a couple of days ago, uh, about a week or so ago actually, and he had said that the TMK configurator uh, was up for the minivan but he was happy to add other keyboards to it as well and he was just asking for people to actually submit keyboards as well as their repository of files so he could load them in. He's got a backlog of different keyboards that he's going to work on as time goes on but I thought this was pretty cool because for a noob like myself it makes life a lot easier and as you can see I've already selected the Ergodox build but there's the minivan and his uh, 
offerings up there, Road Kit, Transit Van, Cargo Pro, but then he's also got the Minorca in there. So if you've got, you know, one of uh, Alex at Pank's Minorcas, you can use this to set it up. And then with the Ergodox, it's just got a standard layout and on the sides you can actually select what you want in the keys and you can just add layers. It'll generate a whole bunch of stuff and then you can throw that into the config. Um, Evan does have a guide on loading configs, so I'm hoping that I'll go through that and see how it turns out. Okay, so let's just uh, get rid of that. So there you go. There is my thoughts and uh, how bad a job I actually did on putting this together. Um, I look forward to getting it up and running and seeing how it feels. Right now, just with my hands on it as a layout, you know, I feel that I probably won't have a very difficult time adjusting to the vertical ortho linear because it does have a bit of stagger to it. Only time will tell. I think probably the biggest points for me as a learning curve on using the Ergodox will be the use of, you know, a custom setup. So I thumb space on my left, which means obviously I'm going to set up one of these to be my space bar. Most likely that one is going to be the space. And then, you know, I'm probably still going to be using my pinky for enter. Um, you know, control is probably still going to be left pinky, but with the TMK, I have the freedom to play around with what setup works best. I am also thinking of perhaps doing like a, uh, a function numpad. So right function and then left hand, sorry, left function, <laughs> left function with maybe the thumb and then a right hand numpad or home uh, block. Simply because if I was to take this and use it in a work scenario, I use the numpad so you see yeah, I have a full size as my primary driver when I work at home um, and then obviously that would save me having to have an additional numpad plugged in so yeah I'm rabbiting on a little bit right now but that is pretty much it some further news coming ahead um, I may be getting my hands on a, another build so when that comes in um, I'll probably do some more videos and build on that. If you do have more content that you want to hear and see from us, if you have any topics that you want you know, us to cover, by all means, let us know. You know. We can only go off what we want to do, what we think is going to be interesting for you, but if you can tell us what you're interested in, then we can look into that and get that happening as well. So, thank you very much for tuning in. If you like the video, obviously like and subscribe to our channel. The more subscriptions, you know, the better it is for us in that we can draw more attention from the keyboard community as well as people outside the community. We can also get more of a leverage in getting products to review from you from different companies. Um, and of course, make sure you check out our weekly podcast, The Board Podcast, of course. You can reach it either through www.theboardpodcast.com. You can find our posts on Reddit or our subreddit, which is The Board Podcast. And uh, yeah, I think I'll pretty much wrap it up there. So thank you for watching. And until next time, happy clacking.